You got a smartphone, right? You, you might be listening to this. You, you got a phone somewhere in the room. The phone is turned off, or at least the screen is turned off. It's sitting there. And if somebody sends you a message, the screen blinks to life. How does that happen? How is it that if someone from any corner of the earth uh, dials a number, your phone rings and nobody else's rings? Every smartphone uh, is constantly connected to the nearest cellular tower. Every phone, even when the screen is off, you think it's doing nothing, you can't see it because radio frequency emissions are invisible. And so your phone is sitting there doing nothing, you think, but it's constantly shouting and saying, I'm here. Who is closest to me? That's the cell phone tower. And every cell phone tower with its big ears uh, is listening and it compares notes with the other network towers and your smartphone compares notes with them to go, who do I hear the loudest? And who you hear the loudest is a proxy for closeness, distance. They go, whoever I hear more loudly than anybody else, that's close to me. So you're gonna be bound to this cell phone tower and that cell phone tower is gonna make a note, a permanent record saying this phone handset with this phone number at this time was connected to me. And based on your phone handset and your phone number, uh, they can get your identity. But what this means is that whenever you're carrying a phone, whenever the phone is turned on, uh, there's a record of your presence at that place that is being made and created by companies. And now these things are stored. Now these things are saved. It doesn't matter whether you're doing anything wrong. It doesn't matter whether you're the most ordinary person uh, on earth because that's how bulk collection, which is the government's euphemism for mass surveillance, works. They simply collect it all in advance in hopes that one day it will become useful. The thing with shutting your phone off that is a risk is how do you know your phone's actually turned off? When I was in Geneva, working for the CIA, we would all carry like drug dealer phones. The old smartphones, or sorry, old dumb phones, they're not smartphones. Uh, and the reason why was just because they had removable, the battery. removable backs yeah. where you could take the battery out. And the, the one beautiful thing about technology is if there's no electricity in it, there's no battery connected to it, it's not sending anything because you have to get power from somewhere. You have to have power in order to do work. But now your phones are all sealed, right? You can't take the batteries out. So there are potential ways that you can hack a phone where it appears to be off, but it's not actually off. It's just pretending to be off. Whereas in fact, it's still listening in and doing all this stuff. I wrote a paper on this specific problem. How do you know when a phone is actually off? How do you know when it's actually not spying on you? With a brilliant, brilliant guy named uh, Andrew Bunny Huang called the introspection engine. But for average people, right, this is academic. That's not your primary threat. Your primary threats are these bulk collection programs. Your primary threat is the fact that your phone is constantly squawking to these cell phone towers, it's doing all of these things, because we leave our phones in a state that is constantly on. You're constantly connected. But the whole idea is we need to identify the problem. And the central problem with smartphone use today is you have no idea what the hell it's doing at any given time. Like the phone has the screen off, you don't know what it's connected to. You don't know how frequently it's doing it. And you don't even know it's happening because you can't see it, right? And this is the problem with the data collection you use today is there is an industry that is built on keeping this invisible. They can see everything about you. They can see everything about what your device is doing and they can do whatever they want with your device. What changed with technology is that surveillance could now become indiscriminate. It could become a uh, dragnet. It could become bulk collection. Uh, the government did it, they used classification. Um, companies did it, uh, they intentionally didn't talk about it, they denied uh, these things were going. They, they said, uh, you agreed to this. You clicked a button that said, I agree, because you were trying to open an account so you could talk to your friends. You were trying to get driving directions. You were trying to get an email account. You weren't trying to agree to some 600 page legal form uh, that even if you read, you wouldn't understand. And it doesn't matter even if you did understand because one of the very first paragraphs in it said, this agreement can be changed at any time unilaterally without your consent by the company. And so long as they do that, companies are gonna be extraordinarily powerful uh, and they're going to be extraordinarily abusive. And this is something that people don't get. They go, oh, well, it's data collection, right? They're exploiting data. Uh, this is data about human lives. Uh, it is data about people. These records are, are about you. It's not data that's being exploited. Uh, it's people that are being exploited. It's not um, data that's being manipulated. It's you that's being uh, manipulated. 
And this, this, is, uh, this is something that I think a lot of people are beginning to understand. Uh, the problem is the companies and the governments are still pretending they don't understand or, or disagreeing with this. And this reminds me of something that uh, one of my old friends, uh, John Perry Barlow, used to say to me, um, which is, uh, you can't awaken someone who's pretending to be asleep.